Porsche, Porsche, Dodge, Porsche. <laughs> Yeah, we also have wage earners, wage earners, leeches, and wage earners. Let's rock. Thanks, Dad. Can I get a whoop Whoa! No Man Presents, live from the nudie bar, the Married with Children podcast. Here are your hosts, Jerry, Justin, and Al. Welcome to episode 16 of the Mare with Children podcast. This is Al, and I am joined by the guy who is serving Justin hand and foot for some reason. I don't know why. Jerry, what's up, Jerry? Uh, I can't talk to you right now. Justin, do you need anything else? Are you comfortable? Would you like a pillow, a uh, orange juice, maybe? Maybe a tangwich. Hmm. Weird. <laughs> and, uh, yep, you heard him, guys. I am also joined by the guy who stole a million dollars in bonds, Justin. What's up, buddy? Uh, guys, if the connection's a little odd tonight, I am podcasting out of Canada. I can't be with you guys tonight in person, but, hmm. uh, yeah. Wow. This is just a very odd situation we're dealing with. Uh, okay, I don't know what this is all about, but... Uh, yeah, guys, so here we are. We are reviewing If I Were a Rich Man. Al is suspected of stealing from Steve's bank. This episode aired on October 4th, 1987. It is the third episode of Season 2, Married with Children. Pig! Kids! Time to torture me! I'm home! <laughs> Let's hear the pitter-patter of little feet! The thrusting of greedy little hands. <laughs> What's this? Dear Al, the kids are spending the night someplace and I'm going out for a few hours. Peggy. This episode starts off great because Al has <laughs> like one of the best lines. I mean, this is memorable. This is one of those kind of lines where you cannot hear it and not chuckle no matter what mood you're in. Got the whole house to myself. It's like I died and went to... Oh, yeah. Hell. <laughs> <laughs> like classic Al. Yeah, that's classic Al. That's the good stuff, man. You know that we're already getting into the golden years once you start an episode off like that. And classic Peggy, she left him dinner, and it's a, a can of soup and OJ. <laughs> yeah, remember he's... Remember in uh, 16 Years and What Do You Get, she said, would you like soup for work tomorrow? And he goes, nah, last time I cut my hand on the can. <laughs> like, she literally hands him a can of soup, and that's his lunch. <laughs> Peg was supposed to be at a Tupperware party at the Zimmerman's, but the uh, video store was all out of X-rated tapes, so nobody was into it, and they kind of just dis- Well, I don't know if you've ever been to a Tupperware party, Alex, but let me tell you, without those tapes, it is so boring. Yeah. How come they don't just take Steve's advice and go on their lunch break to the video store for X-rated tapes? Because none of them work. They don't work in the New Market Mall, I guess. Yeah, it's not as easy for them. You know, Al, since the kids are both gone, I was thinking maybe we could fool around. Uh, Peg, if we do that now, your birthday just won't be special. <laughs> come on, honey. Uh, I gotta say no. But here's an idea. Get me some chips. <laughs> gotta say no. But how about this? Sex for potato chips. Uh, I gotta say no. I give you five bucks. Well, uh, what the hell? This will last longer than sex, anyhow. <laughs> so, because of that, I want to say point to Al. Al gets a point. He averted sex. Oh, yeah. You're right. Yeah, he, he, there was no like wavering. He just, there was no chance she was getting it off him that day. <laughs> yeah. Oh. oh, guess what? You know Billy's dad? You know, the one who goes through his own garbage? There's a, yeah, well, that, maybe that's he's kind of weird for, to say. <laughs> where maybe he's looking for uh, a, a love letter that his wife might have gotten from another man or a, a joint roach from his son smoking pot. 
I don't know. It's it's funny because like to say that guy goes through his garbage to me means that it's more than just hey that guy was out digging in his garbage that one time. You know, it sounds like right. <laughs> like he's always going through his garbage. <laughs> What's weirder is why does he wait till he brings the garbage outside to go through it? Like if the whole neighborhood knows and his family knows he does it, he should just do it inside since they already know. Yeah, do it in the kitchen or in the garage, you know, wherever it goes before it's public. You know, we all uh, learned down the road that Al Bundy eats your garbage, you know. Oh, jeez. But he argues that half a potato is not garbage. How do you know a Frenchman's been in your backyard? I am French, okay? Your garbage cans are empty and your dog's pregnant. <laughs> Didn't I just say I was French? <laughs> oh, well, that's weird. I just, I just made a weird connection joke to our next episode, but <laughs> that's a stand by me. Uh, he said, how do you know that, uh, what was it? Dude, you know what's even weirder about that? You know, how, okay, so you were making the joke because the the next episode is about uh, Buck getting dog pregnant. Yeah. The guy who played Buck was in Stand By Me. What? Are you serious? I'm dead serious. He was. What he was, the hell? I would have to look up the name, but when I was looking through his credits. It's not Jerry O'Connell, is it? <laughs> no. He, yeah, he is in Stand By Me. So you just like double tripled a connection. Wow. See, that's that's what you could do when you've been doing it as long as I have with these bizarre connections, guys. You can just Kevin Bacon the hell out of this. It's great. <laughs> so this is a legendary episode. Do you know what was mentioned for the first time in Bundy history on this episode? Uh, Kelly staying out all night? No. Hmm, I have no idea. Well, I'll just say, I thought you guys might be... Oh, 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 I got it. It's his, it's his Dodge. Yeah. He just won a Porsche for being the 15th caller on the radio. Isn't that great? That is the third Porsche on the block. I can't believe our neighborhood. Porsche, Porsche, Dodge, Porsche. <laughs> yeah, we also have wage earners, wage earners, leeches, and wage earners. <laughs> Kids, I think it's time to thank your father for bringing home minimum wage. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Porsche, Porsche, Dodge, Porsche, which doesn't make any sense because we all know that Steve has a Mercedes, so that actually, and actually that would play into the idea. Remember how we were discussing if the roads live across the street or... Wait, wait, wait. Why do you think Steve has a Mercedes? Keep your kids away from my Mercedes. Because <laughs> he does. <laughs> no, he doesn't have a Mercedes. Didn't he already mention that? No, the the from season one's uh, last episode, Al hits a Mercedes, but it's not his. It's the Japanese people that are there. We we talk about what car Steve wants to get in this episode. Oh, but yeah, well, yeah point, that's it. Okay, right. Yeah, but it's not a Mercedes. Right. Oh, yeah, because he eventually has a Mercedes named Klaus. <laughs> You'll see. It's really weird. Uh, so, yeah, the legendary Dodge and another bizarre connection with me and Al Bundy. The same thing with the Chicago Bears. The I, I, I'm actually a good bowler and stuff. I bowled 300s and things like that. Like, I have all these weird similarities with him, and I actually drive a Dodge. <laughs> and a Dodge was my first car ever, too. Like, isn't that the craziest thing? Like, how is that possible? Maybe it's built in psychologically to your head, and you're just like, they're like, here, take this nice Ford, and you're like, okay. But in your head, you're like, I have driven a Ford lately. And then later on, you're like, I got to get a new car. Al has a Dodge. I need a Dodge. Yeah. <laughs> it's just all psychological. There's another, there's an, a like mini Al living in the back of your head that directs your moves. <laughs> Hey, ask me how I'm doing. How are you doing? You are looking at the new manager of the leading bank of Chicago. Steve got promoted. Well, congratulations. Did you hear that, Al? Steve got promoted. Yeah, that's great. What grade's he in? <laughs> oh, Al. You know, when Marcy got that spot at Kyoto National, her job at our bank opened up. Steve's going to be making a lot more money now. Steve is promoted to manager of the leading bank of chicago i thought that was a descriptive term but it turns out that's the name of it <laughs> the leading bank of chicago <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well they better be leading damn it uh yep oh yeah so they show up and uh he wants to talk to al about 
buying a car because they've bonded over cars before. Yeah. And Al, being a man, knows a thing or two about cars. And I love the joke Al makes when he's talking about, I think he says, uh, the BMW doesn't have an airbag. The Mercedes does. So if you hit a wall, get a BMW. <laughs> Basically saying that he wants, like, if it was, I don't know if he's making the joke that he wants Steve to hit a wall and die with no air- airbags or if That's it was him. Joke. Well, here's the thing, because he asked Al, Al, if you were getting one of these cars, what would you get? So there's also a suicide joke oh, in there that Al would get the one to it, hit the it wall. It could be a so. double joke. Yeah, you're right. It is a double joke. Man, them, them double triples today. I didn't even see it coming. Good catch. You guys are on fire today, man. But my favorite part is when Marcy comes back over there and Steve is at that moment saying, got to get this car so that the w- ladies will want me. And then he quickly goes, so they know what they can't have. Yeah, right. And then they, then him and Marcy kiss. And the look on Al's face of pure disgust, almost like a third grade boy. Yeah. <laughs> Just going, oh, gross. Justin, did you ever have or pursue a car that would just get chicks? No, I've never had the money to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, I, I, on, if I'm being fair, I honestly don't think that ever existed in my era. You know, I was born in 1991. I don't think that that hey, this guy has a really nice car, like, the girls like him. I don't think that existed. Like, if you had a car, it was pretty cool, and it didn't really matter what it looked like uh, in terms of uh, girls just wanted to hang out with somebody with a car, not really a cool car, uh, when I was growing up, so. Yeah, that's actually true, because me and Justin are close to the same age, and when I was old enough, like, to where cars became important, as long as you had a car— you were cool. It didn't matter what kind of car you had. It mattered how good your weed was. <laughs> way, that, that was way more important Yeah. <laughs> than how nice your car was. I agree, man. What about you, Alex? Uh, the When I said on the, on the episode, uh, have you driven a Ford lately? I had that red Mustang convertible that I posted on our Facebook group. That, uh, okay, I'll say this. I can say that, yeah, it can sway girls because when they see you have a car like that, they assume that you have money for other things, which is taking them out to places, buying them crap, you know. So I think it translates. It it says a lot about a person, I guess, you know. And if they're driving a jalopy like a Dodge like Al's car, that says a lot too. And they're going to be like, well, what does he have to offer me? So I, I can see it does work to some degree, but not like on Happy Days. Yeah, it's not as played up as it is in the movies. Oh, Al. Uh, By the way, Marcy has to go away this weekend. Her uh, mother's thinking of remarrying, and she's driving up to run a quick credit check. (laughs) Can you give me a lift home from work tomorrow? Why don't you ask a friend? (laughs) I don't want to put any of them out. What's weird about this, and, you know, it's always weird, like, when they... Remember they had a couple episodes where... They use the same, like uh, Al says, I'm married with children like twice in one episode and stuff like that. Uh, this is an episode right after another one. So it's, unless you want to like uh, split them up into halves, because I'm not sure which Poppy by the Tree episode this was done. But um, two episodes in a row where someone compared where they are to Hawaii. Yeah, I've never been in a bank that was closed before. Yep, yeah, this is where it all happens. You know, this is my favorite time. And my favorite place. Yeah, some people like Hawaii at sunset. Me, give me a bank after hours. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Isn't that weird? <laughs> like, That is weird. Yo, what's up with Peggy dropping a huge word with uh, when she tells Al, you're my albatross? <laughs> yeah, how does she know what a bird is? I mean, uh, what an albatross is. <laughs> you know what? It would be funny if she actually thought it was a bird. In case you listeners don't know what albatross means, it, it it's a metaphor for like a, a burden that feels like a curse. <laughs> hmm. I actually didn't know that. Thank you, yeah. Jerry. Wow, we are just going home so much smarter tonight. It is a it is a metaphor. I always thought it was a bird. <laughs> yeah, no, it it is a bird. There is a bird called an albatross, but oh. there, there's also a, it, it's used as a, a metaphor for like. A burden on someone, not physically, it's usually mentally. A bird in on someone? No, a burden. 
<laughs> okay. So now let's get to the bank, guys. Uh, so, <laughs> so he goes there, and Steve says, "Hold on one second. I've I've one loan to approve, and it won't take long. It's mine." Bam, and he approves his own car loan, <laughs> like. Can you really do that? I mean, none of us can answer that, I'm sure, but I'm sure it's totally illegal, right? I believe it just because this is Chicago and their security guard could not hear knocking on the glass while he was sleeping. <laughs> Steve's like, don't worry, whatever his name is, I'll get it. <laughs> if they hired that guy, then I'm sure that Steve is fully allowed to approve his own loans. Huh. Well, do you guys remember the security guards from... Uh, Where's the boss episode? Oh my god, you're right. Maybe they just have really bad, like, whatever the security company is there. Yeah, for the new market It's just really bad security guards. Because, like, at my work, we had these, we were uh, getting these security guards from one business, and they were really good, but then we lost that contract. And so we got these other security guards, and they are the worst security guards ever. They were going to call the cops on someone because they were in the fire lane, because they were going to load a mattress. Oh my god. That they had just bought from us. <laughs> wow. And we and like they keep and twice now they've locked themselves out of their own car. <laughs> the security car. Twice. <laughs> in a week. Wow. Yeah, in a week they they have locked them themselves out of the, their own car. You know, Justin, that's probably your problem. You should have worked in a bank so you could approve a loan for a new car to get chicks. Yeah, right? <laughs> that Simple as that. That's all you had to do. What do you mean you couldn't afford it? Al? I'm in the vault! Oh. The vault? <laughs> Al, are you crazy? This is a federal offense. I was just looking. Okay, I'm ready to go. <laughs> Al, you can't touch this this is money only the bank president and his squeeze are allowed to play with the money steve smell this tell me we don't have the same rights as a bank president and his squeeze okay so these guys go in they start playing cards and stuff with the bank's money all this kind of stuff al turns around all that money's loaded in his pants and everything <laughs> now the big question would uh, let's just let's just go minimal here because they obviously fantasize about bigger things but let's seriously go minimal and i'm not kidding would you guys palm a grand or two while you were in there like would you stuff it in the back of your like somewhere Steve's not really gonna look and like does somebody count every dollar every night? That's impossible, right? So I would just think like how would anybody know that this is gone? I uh, I would never even consider doing it. I, I'm sure there are plenty of precautionary steps that they take daily to make sure no money goes missing, and it's probably easily tracked to who takes it. At I least so. nowadays, for sure it is. Just working at a hotel and having $300 in the drawer, like, there's so many steps with that $300 to where you can find out, like, the exact minute it disappeared. Really? <laughs> I, and, I'll, and I put it this way. Like, if I put myself in Al's exact situation and I'm there with the sleeping security guard and Steve, I wouldn't do it strictly because steve is going to wrap me out so fast he's going to be like there were only three of us here the security guard my friend who was coming to give me a ride and me and even though steve knows he's going to get in trouble he would still rather have al get busted right. and i'm petrified of anal rape so <laughs> a grand is not worth the possibility of the 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 federal because Steve made a – and I don't know if it's a joke, but Steve say it's a federal offense for Al to even be in the vault. Right. And so – which at the same time I was like, yeah, but Al has the same rights as the president's main squeeze. Yeah. <laughs> so – So should it should be there? But either way, a grant – if I was going to do it, I wouldn't do it – I would only, I would have to do the go big and go home model. <laughs> Because take it all I, take it all and go to Canada, because otherwise I'm not doing it because a, a couple of grand is not worth the couple of inches I'm going to receive in jail. I got a couple of friends in Canada. <laughs> yeah. Is it unnatural for me to be horny? <laughs> not at all, Steve. And OK, I want to ask you two guys. 
since y'all had a problem with him bringing up him being horny before, did oh, you God. have a problem with him saying, is it wrong for me to feel horny? It's still just as awkward. Yeah, I thought it was awkward. I don't see it as awkward, okay? But on the flip side, when Al was like, they sell BMWs in Canada's with hookers dressed as college girls, that's not awkward for you? But no, the no. word horny is. Right. So no. you can entice your friend with things that will make him horny to commit a crime, but he's not allowed to say the word horny? Of course. Yeah. There's, it's, it's, like, it's like going and pe- you know, ne- picking okay. the, the urinal right next to the other one, even though there's like <laughs> – uh, uh, 10 open you know you go stand right next to the other guy it's just okay. like why you do that bro <laughs> like second question are y'all both high right now like no he's right he's right about that too y'all are crazy i don't know what you're talking Dude, about come on you you're you're gonna compare a guy saying al i'm horny what are you gonna do about it or i'm horny right now with this money and I, I'm, I'm alone in a room with you al and i'm horny that's normal to you <laughs> But and it's normal to to convince your friend to to steal money, go to Canada, get a BMW with hookers that are dressed like college. Yes, girls? because that's like what? saying that's like saying, oh man, can you imagine being on the like? Let's just say there was uh uh like the Spice Girls or whatever. Just imagine like if somebody goes, oh man, wouldn't you love to be in a room with the five of them or whatever alone? Like, why would that be weird? But if they said. Man, those Spice Girls turn me on. No, that's not wrong either. Right. <laughs> Wait, okay, so it's, it's so but if I would have said, "Man, those Spice Girls make me so horny." It's it's a little Why? weirder, but it's still acceptable. Right. <laughs> okay, how is that any different than saying money makes me horny? It's just the way it's like they're in a room with each other. <laughs> There's nobody else there except for money, and it's just the way that he says it. He's like is, he's like, I'm horny right so, now. Okay, <laughs> but if, like, if, if if me and Alex are in a room alone together watching Spice World for whatever weird Spice reason we're Spice watching Spice. it. Yeah. And I said, and I looked over and I was like, Al, is it weird that, that Scary Spice gets me horny? That would be weird. I'd, I'd say, do you want me to leave the room for a little bit and uh, <laughs> you could take care of this? Because there, there's something different. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I think you're missing something. There's something different about knowing the state and condition of your mind and penis as opposed to just just saying, uh, oh, man, uh, you know, wh- whatever I do with her, I don't know what I would do, but it would last five seconds, I can tell you that. Like, that is just some kind of, like, in-passing kind of guy talk, but stating your arousal to me is just odd. Like, I don't want to hear about that. Well, because <laughs> one is... directly says it and one implies it? I don't know, it's just... <laughs> Okay, Which okay. Weird, in, man. <laughs> okay, everyone listen to this podcast. In the Married with Children podcast Facebook group. You know everybody's going to agree with us. You have to know that, right? <laughs> uh, there is some people with their inner Steves in that group. Let's say I pull the car around back. We load it up and head for Canada. Where the dollar means something. <laughs> Call the girls in about 10 years. Yeah. Why? I don't exactly know. Come on, Steve! They sell Mercedes in Canada, big ones, and they come with hookers dressed like college girls. Come on, Steve, get some bags. I'll toss out Peg's dry cleaning and we'll make room in the trunk. It's not like we're never going to see the girls again, right? Right! Okay, I'll get the car! If Wyatt wakes up, kill him. (laughs) Wait a second. Al, this is insane. It's wrong. It, it's illegal. Oh, that's it. It's illegal. <laughs> ah, come on, buddy. We've had our fun. Let's go home. He Was he seriously considering this? Because I couldn't tell by his acting and his delivery. I, I, I don't know if, it, if it's bad acting or not or, or what. I, think I, was... I feel like both of them are joking. That's what I was saying, but I'm thinking, no, dude. I actually think he was considering it just as much as Al was considering cheating on his wife. It's the same kind of situation. They both kind of have the same responses to where they kind of, for lack of a better term, flirt with the idea, but then turn around and and, and not do it. Like, and so they flirt with it for like a second, for a split second. They're like, 
Al is ready to jump this blonde, and for a split second, uh, Steve is ready to steal this money and, and go on the lam with Al. But then, obviously, they come to their senses and realize that, you know, that's not something they could do for moral reasons, illegal reasons, whatever. So I don't think it was bad acting. I think he was flirting with the idea for a split second, just like Al was in season one. But they come to their senses. I, I think it was one of those times. I, 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 th- I could kind of see where you're coming from. That's kind of what I what I m- meant when they were, like, joking about it. Like, I think that there was, like, a level of, like, well, maybe, like, you know. And I think anybody would kind of have that that brief sort of thoughts, like, run through your head. Like, could I get away with this? You know what I mean? Well, I just did. <laughs> I was willing to get anal rape for $2,000. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. I guess I wasn't thinking that one through. <clears throat> yeah, you're right. I guess I would either go big or go home, man. Yeah. Uh, Al didn't steal this money, but... Would the would the woman you would eventually you'll eventually marry would she have stole the money? I mean, if it's any if it's most people from my past, then absolutely. <laughs> I'm just trying to see because because Kelly says that if it would have been her husband, he would have stole it. Ooh, yeah, because she says my future boy, my future husband would have done it. Yeah, Kelly, uh, it's weird that whole family. It's weird, you know, if you think about it, Al has has the only sort of moral compass of that entire family, right? I mean, they are just like... <laughs> Bud says, Bud calls a, a, an 18-year-old and gets a date with her because he has money now. Uh, and See, now that's a good joke. You see, remember how in the last episode I was kind of like wishy-washy with the whole, you know Coca-Cola? That's me. You know Chevrolet? That's me. See, to me, that's like still little brother stuff. Like, to me, him calling that girl and saying, oh, remember how you said you wouldn't date me for all the money in the world? Let's test that theory, shall we? Like, that's Bud Bundy. That <laughs> joke was hilarious. Oh, man, so good. But even with Kelly, we've had two jokes where she, where they're like, I thought you were staying out tonight. She goes, I did stay out last night. So she stayed out all night <laughs> and all day. <laughs> yeah. And she says it with this kind of like smirk on her face that, that is kind of like the wink, wink, hint, hint. And then she makes a joke about here that her future husband is going to be, you know, someone who would steal money from a bank. Well, the more important thing she says, which is telling about her character as a whole. Do you remember who she said uh, she wanted chained to her bed? Oh, it's some like washed out uh, metal <laughs> sky, right? That no one cares about anymore. <laughs> Sweater, a CD player, David Lee Roth chained to my bed. <laughs> oh, wait, what's he from? Panther? I don't know. Wasp? Uh, Van Halen. Van Halen. Van Helsing. I, okay, I mean. No, he was, dude, when that guy sang, he made every song sound like a party. I mean, he was, uh, there's just some kind of fun that just exuded from him, but. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I can't say he's not washed up, but he couldn't have had a worse fate in the world. I mean, especially in terms of what we're doing right now. Like, we're just doing this radio show type thing. It's really just a podcast. And he actually, if people don't know this, he took over Howard Stern's spot when Howard Stern went to satellite radio. I don't know if anybody knows because it's different everywhere. But uh, Howard was on a station where he actually broadcast from was 92.3 K-Rock in New York. And that's exactly the seat that David Lee Roth took over. And it is a horrible story about like a few months into it, the ratings were so bad and the feedback was so bad and everything was just got really dark really quick. And uh, within months, this is not a joke, they literally told him to stop talking and just read from a newspaper. (laughs) He actually got on the air and just read the newspaper stories. Like, they they wouldn't even, they said, we don't want any of your stories, your personality, nothing. So what you're saying is is he should have took the gig on Kelly's bed. Uh, Yeah, he'd still be there. No, actually, no, he wouldn't last anywhere he goes, actually. (laughs) Yeah, forget it. Never mind. I think uh, between Van Halen, the radio, and Kelly's bed, I don't think he has any, uh, he has a very short shelf life. Wow, I think you just dissed him more than I did. Holy wow. shit. Oh, well, I, I'm just saying the facts at this point. <laughs> so, the whole family, uh, somehow, oh, I guess Al told them all the story about how he was in the bank, 
and they're all they're all like you idiot you buffoon i can't believe it didn't take the money like jerry said kelly said her future husband would have taken it all right al there's a million dollars missing where is it The whole family's like, I love you, and they're all sorry for what they've been saying. I can have everything I want. I love my daddy. We all do, dear. Al, you are scum. (laughs) But he can buy and sell you, buddy. (laughs) Steve, listen, you know I didn't take it. Now, how could I carry out a million dollars? Those security bonds, ten stinking pieces of paper. You could have put them anywhere while I was out of the vault. Security bonds. Brilliant, Dad. (laughs) Those are good in Canada, aren't they, Al? And they start, you know, just serving him, uh, you know, rubbing his feet, cooking him food. And boy, does he take advantage. Like, once he says... If a guy did have a million dollars, he sure wouldn't share it with someone who wouldn't fix his breakfast. It's not golden brown enough. I knew it, I knew it. I'm sorry. The harm is done, bud. Daddy's upset. Don't badger your father, kids. Juice, Al? Why not? I squeezed it myself. (laughs) Tell us again about Rio, honey. Okay. When that camera, when the whole film, like, turns and flips, (laughs) and he's sitting there, like, all proper, like, sitting at the table, and they're just running around him, serving him, like, that is, like, (laughs) so Al Bundy, man, perfect. He even has a napkin tucked into his shirt. Yeah, he's, like, royalty now. And I do like, uh, when Steve does come in and accuse him, not only does Steve, like, have, like, the most serious face ever on right now, like, his war face, but when he leaves, he says, I'm gonna go drink moderately, and pass out. And I was like, whoa, Steve, you're living a little extreme there. You better calm down. <laughs> Ooh, moderate drinking. This guy's a badass. And I love Peggy's like, if Al says he didn't do it, he didn't do it. And then as soon as Steve leaves, Peggy's like, oh, I love you. Yeah. But how about that look on Steve's face when he closed right before he closed the door? Like, that was good acting, man. And it was even yeah. good acting on uh, Katie Seagal's part. Like, you know, Peg, the way she said... If he didn't, he said he didn't do it, then he didn't do it. Like, everybody, like, kind of, like, dropped the jokey thing for a second and were just serious because it's sort of like a serious matter. And they really played it well. And that's the cool thing about the show because that those little moments are sort of what keep the show grounded amongst all the madness. You know? I mean, would you agree on that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Like, if that wasn't there, the show would just be like, like joke fest that like, is just here for comedy and there's no um there's no truth in any of it like you know you have to have truth in this to to work so i think that that's a good dynamic and that really is what makes the show work i find it hilarious when al is describing like rio to them and talking about cabin boys and just talking about all the things they could do with the money like and peg even like is singing a song about rio boys And the surfer boys, in their tiny little bathing suits, will be riding the waves. Tell me again about their bodies, Al. (laughs) They're tight, Peg. Young, tight and tan, still glistening from the surf. (gasps) Okay, do you think it was odd for Al to talk about young, young, tan, muscular? Boys, if even to gain what he gained, like, would you talk about that stuff? <laughs> to your wife. To your wife. Would you talk about young cabin boys to your wife? <laughs> I don't know. I guess it depends about the, depends on the context. Okay. A- Alex, you're actually married. Would you talk about cabin boys to get your uh, wife to make you better breakfasts and dinners and get massages and all of that. I don't know. It's, I, I don't see that. I Like, I don't see myself. Di- like, it's weird. Cause I feel that it, it's sort of out of character of even Al to do it. And I know it's, uh, there's some comedic value there and I know he has, uh, something to gain, but <clears throat> I mean, the closest I've ever come to even like, 
going there, I guess, with my wife is whenever I really like a guy in a, a show or a movie or something like, um, you know, I like Rocky and Arnold Schwarzenegger and uh, Sons and of Charlie. Anarchy. Yeah, Jax from Sons of Anarchy. So my wife thinks that I enjoy hearing her say how hot they are. <laughs> so she she does it sometimes to a point where I would normally get mad, but since I really like them, I'm sort of willing to hear anything positive about them. So I just so time out, time just out. Accept it. Yeah, you just accept that your wife that your wife is is talking about how sexy this this dirty biker with the abs is. <laughs> To you, and you're just like you want to get mad, but you're like, "Damn, she has a point, though." No, I don't say that. I just <laughs> oh, come on, don't lie. No, I understand he's good looking. I can tell the difference between a good looking guy and a, a, a and me. But well, speaking of good looking guys, Steve shows back up. Oh God! And, and Steve says he's going to kill Al, but if he can't. He's going to make sure that his boyfriend's bigger than Al's boyfriend. Ah. So here's the, I do not think Steve could kill Al. We've already seen Al's got hands. Oh, yeah. He's got the upper cunts. Upper cunts. <laughs> He's got the upper cunts. I thought <laughs> we can't say the C word anymore. I, you know what? This, Jamie, this is your fault. He's got the upper cuts. He's got the, the sucker punch. He's got all that. But Steve could definitely get a bigger boyfriend than Al could. But you're going to love this. Your bank lost a million dollars. <laughs> oh, I get another job and things just fall apart. I mean, how do you lose a million dollars? They were in a panic. The computer made a transfer of funds to Munich, but the telex confirmation... Had the 12-hour international delay. Of course. Well, I'm sure you would have caught it if you hadn't been out sick. I'm better now. Isn't that something? I'll bet a couple of idiots down at the bank thought somebody took it. Steve's face goes from, like, feeling just the dumbest to once he realizes that the mistake is something so little and that he's got free, he becomes the, the happiest guy possible. Yeah, but doesn't he show what a true... Jerk he is? Yes. Yes, because he won't apologize to Al. He doesn't... Instead, he tells Al to keep their his kids away from his BMW. That's so. <laughs> what a dick. I, I find that so weird that it's BMW, and then his whole thing becomes a Mercedes. Uh, Al, yes, Steve. Keep your kids away from my Mercedes. <laughs> I could, I'm pretty. I know they talked a lot about a BMW. In this episode, because it was a Volvo, a BMW, and a Mercedes. Maybe he did say Mercedes at the end because now he no longer wants to agree with Al. I We'd have to go back and check. Yeah, I don't remember the Volvo. I remember that Kelly had to drive a Volvo and don't tell mom the babysitter's dead, but I don't remember. No, he, he. I only remember it because I our past car was a Volvo. And so when I saw that, I was like, Steve, don't get a Volvo. <laughs> well... <laughs> Life isn't so bad, is it, kids? <laughs> and on a local note, tragedy was narrowly averted moments ago when a sobbing woman and her two hysterical children were talked down from a ledge on the Sears Tower. It's believed to be the first family suicide attempt in Chicago history. The woman was quoted as sobbing, shoes, he sells shoes. <laughs> I'm home! <laughs> because their, her husband sells shoes. Well, that, that's enough to make you jump off the Sears Tower headfirst into a thumbtack. Yeah, well, fun part about it is, see, at the time, the Sears Tower was the tallest building in the world. Wow. And it's local. And, yes, and it's local. You don't have to spend a lot of money on gas to kill yourself. <laughs> So she was on t she was on the ledge of the Sears Tower screaming my husband sells shoes. And the children. 
How did no one call like child protective services after this incident? How did they have another episode? Like I, I like this joke, <laughs> but at the same time, I'm just like, how does the series continue after this? You're like right. no one calls child protective services. There's no police investigation. <laughs> no, no, it's on the news. Right. That, that's one of those moments where it completely breaks into fantasy. <laughs> like, where you just say, like, okay, this would never happen. Yeah, you just have to go, okay, it's a sitcom. Wow. Like, no, I, I would rather sit here right now and picture Peg Bundy and the kids on a ledge of the top of the Sears Tower saying he sells shoes. <laughs> he sells shoes. <laughs> Shoes. And she's crying. I get picture of the whole thing. Yeah, they do say that uh, she's sobbing. So she is crying. Yeah, that is what a brilliant ending. Wow. Okay. <laughs> great, great, great. No Ma'am will be right back to wrap up this week's review. Be sure to join their Facebook group page for all the podcast news and updates. Just type in www.facebook.com slash groups slash Married with Children podcast. Be sure to subscribe to them on iTunes and please leave a review telling them what you think of the show. To subscribe to their YouTube channel, just go to channels and search up Married with Children podcast. You can email them at podcast at gmail.com. Thanks for checking out this review. Now the guys are going to give their final thoughts and ratings of this week's episode. Guys, how many million dollar security bonds do you give if I were a rich man, Justin? Well, uh, this episode, I like episodes that center around Al and Steve, uh, but I, I don't think that this is like a landmark episode or anything. So uh, I'm going to come in at three and a half out of five million dollar security bonds for this episode nice solid entry go ahead uh jerry i actually gave it a four out of five because one every single character is solid in this episode even marcy who has the smallest amount of screen time is still great and hilarious um the jokes were rapid and just on fire this entire episode and I, the ending joke is a little eh. Oh, come on. That's classic. Just because of how crazy it is, but this also is an episode where we see an ongoing joke we'll see throughout the series of Al coming home going, oh, no, don't rush me, family, and they're not there. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay, wait. I got to tell you this. Like, th th We have to get this out of the way before we continue this podcast. Uh. You could stop thinking that way because whatever grounded reality that you may have developed while watching and reviewing season one, you could forget about that, dude, because... I just throw it out the window. Yeah, things like that, okay. things like Peg being on, talked off a ledge off the series tower saying my husband sells sh women's shoes, that is right up the alley of all there is to come. So if you're already saying, uh, oh, you know, I, like I'm telling you, it, you don't, here's the, here's the reason I'm saying it though. Obviously do what you want, but you don't want to hinder or like lessen all of this great comedic value based off of a premise being ridiculous. You know, I know we sort of danced around doing that on the last episode because that was so comical and how jarring it was when you're coming right off of season one, which was not like that at all. And obviously they went a little overboard in Poppy by the Tree, you know, even having a killer and even having no team of police there to investigate or nothing or that would have been, you know, there's a million reasons why that whole episode Poppy by the Tree was absurd. But well, I but I see where you're coming from. I do need to there is a difference between a plot and a joke, and I do need to be more willing to accept a joke yeah. regardless of its actual real world yeah ex actions uh so but i'm slowly moving into that because i'm still a lot of season one up in me yeah that's what i'm it's exactly what i'm getting at right yeah so i will from this point on if it's a plot that's stupid i'll call it out but if it's a joke that would have stupid real world consequences i'll i'll, I'll let it slide because there's gonna be a million just so you know 
And it's great. It's all great. Trust me. There's a reason it was successful and a reason that it's sold everywhere. There's websites about it. There's a podcast about it. Someone does a podcast on this? That is the dumbest thing ever. So, Alex, what do you give the rating for this episode? <laughs> well, how many million dollars uh, security bonds am I giving it? Um, I uh, – it's funny. I always go through this. I'll probably say this like 200 more times before we're done. When I put an episode on sometimes, I really think this is going to be a run-of-the-mill common thing I'm not going to care about. And I really always have a good time. And I, I seem to like – once I look at it a little closer – episodes that really fell by the wayside before that I just sort of skipped over when I was going through my DVDs and deciding what to pick. Now that I'm giving them that second chance or fifth, because I probably watched every episode five times minimally. But now that I'm doing that, I really have a good time with these things and I really see them for what they are. So I got to say, this is a four out of five to me. I mean, I think it's really, really good. So I, yeah, I'm, I'm totally down with, uh, if I were a rich man. So, uh, guys, tune in next week when we review Buck Can Do It. Peg insists that Al have Buck neutered. So, guys, I really miss the uh, nudie bar, and I was wondering if I could pay to have you guys flown up to Canada so we can be together again. Well, why would you... Why would you bring a whole building to Canada? Why don't you... That makes no sense. Well, you have like a million dollars or something, right? Like, isn't that enough money to fly back here? Uh, I I guess so. What the hell? Like, wouldn't that be easier if you just came back? Yeah, it's not like you stole the money or anything. This episode starts off great because Al has, like, one of the best lines. I mean, this is memorable. This is one of those kind of lines where you cannot hear it and not chuckle no matter what mood you're in. Ah, got the whole house to myself. It's like I died and went to Hi, Al. hell. <laughs> Like classic Al. Yeah, that's classic Al. That's the good stuff, man. You know that we're already getting into the golden years once you start an episode off like that. And classic Peggy, she left him dinner and it's a, a can of soup and OJ. Mm. Yeah, remember he's remember in uh, sixteen years and what do you get? She said, Would you like soup for work tomorrow? And he goes, Nah, last time I cut my hand on the can. <laughs> Like, she literally hands him a can of soup, and that's his lunch. Peg was supposed to be at a Tupperware party at the Zimmerman's, but the uh, video store was all out of X-rated tapes, so nobody was into it, and they kind of just dis- Well, I don't know if you've ever been to a Tupperware party, Alex, but let me tell you, without those tapes, it is so boring. Yeah. How come they don't just take Steve's advice and go on their lunch break to the video store for X-rated tapes? Because none of them work. They don't work in the New Market Mall, I guess. Yeah, it's not as easy for them. You know, Al, since the kids are both gone, I was thinking maybe we could fool around. Uh, Peg, if we do that now, your birthday just won't be special. <laughs> Come on, honey. Uh, I gotta say no. But here's an idea. Get me some chips. <laughs> gotta say no. But how about this? Sex for potato chips. Uh, I gotta say no. I give you five bucks. Well, what the hell? This will last longer than sex, anyhow. <laughs> so, because of that, I want to say point to Al. Al gets a point. He averted sex. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, he he. There was no like wavering. He just there was no chance she was getting it off him that day. <laughs> yeah. Good job. Oh. oh, guess what? You know Billy's dad? You know, the one who goes through his own garbage? There's a, well, yeah, that, maybe that's kind of weird for, to say. <laughs> where maybe he's looking for uh, a, a love letter that his wife might have gotten from another man or a, a joint roach from his son smoking pot. 
I don't know. It's it's funny because like to say that guy goes through his garbage to me means that it's more than just hey that guy was out digging in his garbage that one time. You know, it sounds like right. <laughs> like he's always going through his garbage. <laughs> What's weirder is why does he wait till he brings the garbage outside to go through it? Like if the whole neighborhood knows and his family knows he does it, he should just do it inside since they already know. Yeah, do it in the kitchen or in the garage, you know, wherever it goes before it's public. You know, we all uh, learn down the road that Al Bundy eats your garbage, you know. Oh, jeez. But he argues that half a potato is not garbage. How do you know a Frenchman's been in your backyard? I am French, okay? Your garbage cans are empty and your dog's pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't I just say I was French? <laughs> oh, well, that's weird. I just made a weird connection joke to our next episode, but <laughs> that's a stand by me. Uh, he said, how do you know that, uh, what was it? Dude, you know what's even weirder about that? You know, how, okay, so you were making the joke because the the next episode is about uh, Buck getting dog pregnant. Yeah. The guy who played Buck was in Stand By Me. What? Are you serious? I'm dead serious. He was. What he was, the hell? I would have to look up the name, but when I was looking through his credits. It's not Jerry O'Connell, is it? <laughs> no. He, yeah, he is in Stand By Me. So you just like double tripled a connection. Wow. See, that's that's what you could do when you've been doing it as long as I have with these bizarre connections, guys. You can just Kevin Bacon the hell out of this. It's great. <laughs> so this is a legendary episode. Do you know what was mentioned for the first time in Bundy history on this episode? Uh, Kelly staying out all night? No. Hmm, I have no idea. Well, I'll just say, I thought you guys might be... Oh, 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 I got it. It's his, it's his Dodge. Yeah. He just won a Porsche for being the fifth promoted. Yeah, that's great. What grade's he in? <laughs> oh, Al. You know, when Marcy got that spot at Kyoto National, her job at our bank opened up. Steve's going to be making a lot more money now. Steve is promoted to manager of the leading bank of chicago i thought that was a descriptive term but it turns out that's the name of it (laughs) the leading bank of chicago (laughs) (laughs) well they better be leading damn it uh yep oh yeah so they show up and uh he wants to talk to al about buying a car because they've bonded over cars before yeah and al being a man knows a thing or two about cars and i love the joke al makes when he's talking about I think he says uh, the BMW doesn't have an airbag. The Mercedes does. So if you hit a wall, get a BMW. (laughs) Basically saying that he wants like if it was – I don't know if he's making the joke that he wants Steve to hit a wall and die with no airbags or if it was him. Well, here's the thing because he asked Al, Al, if you were getting one of these cars, what would you get? So there's also a suicide joke oh. in there that Al would get the one to it, hit the it wall. It could be a stuff. double joke. Yeah, you're right. It is a double joke. Man, them, them double triples today. I didn't even see it coming. Good catch. You guys are on fire today, man. But my favorite part is when Marcy comes back over there and Steve is at that moment saying, got to get this car so that the w- ladies will want me. And then he quickly goes, so they know what they can't have. Yeah, right. And then they, then him and Marcy kiss, and the look on Al's face of pure disgust, almost like a third-grade boy, <laughs> just going, oh, gross. Justin, did you ever have or pursue a car that would just get chicks? No, I've never had the money to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, I, I, on, if I'm being fair, I honestly don't think that ever – existed in my era you know i was born in 1991 i don't think that that hey this guy has a really nice car like the girls like him i don't think that existed like if you had a car it was pretty cool and it didn't really matter what it looked like uh in terms of uh porsche porsche dodge porsche (laughs) yeah we also have wage earners wage earners leeches and wage earners (laughs) Let's rock. Thanks, Dad. Can I get a whoop Whoa! No Man Presents, live from the nudie bar, the Married with Children podcast. Here are your 
your hosts, Jerry, Justin, and Al. Welcome to episode 16 of the Mare with Children podcast. This is Al, and I am joined by the guy who is serving Justin hand and foot for some reason. I don't know why. Jerry, what's up, Jerry? Uh, I can't talk to you right now. Justin, do you need anything else? Are you comfortable? Would you like a pillow, a uh, orange juice, maybe? Maybe a tangwich. Hmm. Weird. <laughs> and, uh, yep, you heard him, guys. I am also joined by the guy who stole a million dollars in bonds, Justin. What's up, buddy? Uh, guys, if the connection's a little odd tonight, I am podcasting out of Canada. I can't be with you guys tonight in person, but, uh, yeah. Wow, this is just a very odd situation we're dealing with. Uh, okay, I don't know what this is all about, but uh, yeah, guys, so here we are. We are reviewing If I Were a Rich Man, Al is Suspected of Stealing from Steve's Bank. This episode aired on October 4th, 1987. It is the third episode of Season 2, Married with Children. Pig! Kids, time to torture me, I'm home. <laughs> Let's hear the pitter-patter of little feet, the thrusting of greedy little hands. <laughs> What's this? Dear Al, the kids are spending the night someplace and I'm going out for a few hours. Peggy. Teeth caller on the radio, isn't that great? That is the third Porsche on the block. I can't believe our neighborhood. Porsche, Porsche, Dodge, Porsche. <laughs> Yeah, we also have wage earners, wage earners, leeches, and wage earners. Kids, I think it's time to thank your father for bringing home minimum wage. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Porsche, Porsche, Dodge, Porsche, which doesn't make any sense because we all know that Steve has a Mercedes, so that actually, and actually that would play into the idea. Remember how we were discussing if the roads live across the street or... Wait, wait, wait. Why do you think Steve has a Mercedes? Keep your kids away from my Mercedes. Because he does. <laughs> no, he doesn't have a Mercedes. Didn't he already mention that? No, the the from season one's uh, last episode, Al hits a Mercedes, but it's not his. It's the Japanese people that are there. We we talk about what car Steve wants to get in this episode. Oh, but yeah, well, yeah point, that's it. Okay, right. Yeah. But it's not a Mercedes. Right. Oh, yeah, because he eventually has a Mercedes named Klaus. <laughs> You'll see. It's really weird. Uh, so, yeah, the legendary Dodge and another bizarre connection with me and Al Bundy. The same thing with the Chicago Bears. And the I, I, I'm actually a good bowler and stuff. I bowled 300s and things like that. Like, I have all these weird similarities with him, and <laughs> I actually drive a Dodge. <laughs> and a Dodge was my first car ever, too. Like, isn't that the craziest thing? Like, how is that possible? Maybe it's built in psychologically to your head, and you're just like, they're like, here, take this nice Ford, and you're like, okay. But in your head, you're like, I have driven a Ford lately. And then later on, you're like, I got to get a new car. Al has a Dodge. I need a Dodge. Yeah, <laughs> this is all psychological. There's another, there's an uh, like mini owl living in the back of your head that directs your moves. <laughs> hey, ask me how I'm doing. How are you doing? You are looking at the new manager of the leading bank of Chicago. Steve got promoted. Well, congratulations. Did you hear that, Al? Steve got 